Hi, and welcome to Unnecessary Computer Things. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at fourth language in an emulated uh, Jupyter Ace environment. J Jupyter Ace was a ZX81-like computer uh, that used fourth programming language instead of basic as its uh, programming environment. So, uh, but as you can see, as we type in here, I'm going, I'm going to be loading some example code from the Jupyter Ace manual here to just get started. Uh, one thing that the Jupyter Ace fourth ROM does not come with is like advanced math functions like sine and cosine so we actually have to program those in but i've typed those in um, another thing is uh, notice these two dupe uh, and two wrote and two drop those are actually uh, so so the jupiter race uses 16-bit uh, wide uh, integers on the stack the float for the jupiter race is actually 32 bits so you actually if you want to have handy functions for that you actually have to create your own methods to to work with those and so you have to work with two consecutive uh, locations on the stack there uh, so as you can see though as, as we're going in as we're typing in the input goes on the bottom of the screen for the Jupyter Ace, much like you would see in the ZX80 or ZX81. Uh, another thing that's fun about typing on this keyboard is that you, the asterisks require you to use symbol shift, and, which is mapped either to the left or the right shift on uh, the emulated keyboard, or uh, you or the right control key, uh, but it's simple shift and B for the asterisk and simple shift P for the double quote. So it, if you're used to typing on a modern computer, that really can uh, mess with your head some. So. Uh, but as you see, as we type these in, you can actually see that it, it just feeds up and then, and then it keeps taking input here until we get to a semicolon. And then it hopefully returns an okay if we've actually typed it incorrectly and not created any syntax errors. So you can do multi-line and as you notice, so as I enter things here, it's going to sometimes actually just tack that on to the end of the line instead of creating a new line for it. Um, there are certain syntactical breaks that it does that allow for that. Um, oh, and so, so, so we have an error. In this case, the error here is that you need an actual space before the semicolon or else it doesn't recognize it as a separate, uh, separate symbol. It, it, it kind of tries to think, it tries to figure out if that's supposed to be part of whatever other input you're inputting. So one one interesting thing, so is if you notice these like 640 and then I type in the do loop. So the do loop structure uh, takes two arguments. It takes uh, like your terminating uh, terminating value and then your initial value and if you use just loop by itself, then it, it, it increments one each time. 
but you put those numbers on the stack first and then you set and then you start your do so that it says okay we'll grab the two top of the stack so you actually have to have those on the top of the stack first or else it will yell at you that uh, hopefully uh, you may have other values on the stack but if you don't then it will it will do a error that's basically a stack underflow where you hey I don't have enough values on the stack another fun uh, um, version of this is so if you notice I'm doing the same do loop again here but now I'm putting a 10 near the end of the loop here and then doing a plus loop so that method behaves a little bit differently that method um, takes whatever's at the top of the stack at the end of the loop and adds that to the iterator so instead of it incrementing by one you're incrementing by 10 in this case so we're going to run this plot and actually I have the listing for in uh, the Commodore 128 that does this the same 640 graph increments so I'm actually going to run this at the same time just to create a little bit of a race between the two and Actually, I'll start the Jupyter's version first. Oh, okay, so plot. Well, plot is not an actual function, but plot one is. Okay, so we're gonna start plot, and then we're actually gonna start the Commodore 128 version. So we're doing 640 steps along the way for both of these. And as you can see, <laughs> the Commodore 128 version is moving along quite a bit faster. Now, uh, the emulated processor is at a higher clock speed for the Jupyter Ace. It is, it is using like PAL, so uh, 50 cycles per second instead of 60. Uh, I don't think there is an analog for, for NTSC, but you can see that this is actually almost completely done at this point yeah and so 35 seconds and meanwhile the Jupiter Aces version has only gone about a quarter of the way through um, so what's going on there uh, so our sign function is completely coded in fourth which uh, the it, it's going through and it's going through these those 14 iterations for the newton method uh to to approximate the value of the sign um, you can you can do fewer iterations uh but ultimately the range on this on this graph is about minus two pi to two pi radians and if you drop too many terms off of that, then the left side of the graph sags quite a bit uh, relative to the right side. It, it I mean, it, it, it's pretty asymmetrical. Uh, so those 14 terms are pretty, pretty close to what was necessary to actually get a symmetrical graph. Uh, I, I dropped them in half and it was, the, the graph actually just barely started at the x-axis. So it is somewhat necessary. So not having that in machine code, and you can code machine code in, in the, in, on the Jupyter Ace, but uh, not having that actually set in machine code by having that embedded in ROM is a huge limiting factor to how fast you're program can run because now you're doing it all in this interpreted language instead and it it's still going so like I said 640 points so that's a little bit overkill for for this uh, plot area because you have 64 points 64 of these dots wide so 32 characters wide uh, 64 uh, plot points wide and then 
23 rows or 46 plot points uh, and up and down. And one of the interesting things with this versus a lot of the other um, language, a lot of the other systems is the coordinate system y equals zero is at the bottom of the screen instead of the top. So I actually don't have to invert the graph that way. Uh, let's clear the screen and we're going to actually run this, uh, this second plot function. And if you can see this second one actually increments by 10, which I'm scaling it down uh, when I plot it. So that's actually one per one point per uh, point along the x-axis that we can actually display. So if I run this and I run the Commodore version, you'll actually see that it, now it keeps up because it's only, it, it is doing a tenth of the iterations there. And it actually will beat the Commodore uh, this time around. Uh, but it is obviously doing one tenth of the number of points too, uh, and that uh, all of that comes down to, like I said, this this sine function. And I don't know if it's called function. I can't remember function method subroutine um, in in fourth. But if you can see down here, uh, this twenty, this two wrote two wrote. So it's like two stack rotations, two stack rotations. And then there's 27 and two, that's those two numbers feed into the do loop. And then you increment by two each time. So that ends up being about that 14 terms that it calculates. And there's some calculation in here and here too. It's not just the number of rotation or number of iterations through the loop, it's also that it's doing some complex calculations as well. Uh, I will link to program listings for this, one of which has an annotation on it. And also I'll have a blog post here to do a little bit deeper dive into it and also link to the manuals uh, that you can actually read up on the Jupyter Ace. And the emulator I'm using is the 81 emulator. There's also the Spud Ace emulator, which works pretty well. They have similar features. I found that the 81 emulator is actually a little bit more functional in terms of being able to save programs off and things. Uh, and the, your mileage may vary depending on your setup too. So uh, different environment, different setup might behave differently, different releases even. Uh, but I'm using the 81 emulator, which actually has the ZX80 and 81 and the Spectrum and other emulated uh, types as well. So, but that's all for the demonstration and thanks for watching.